Terry McManus joins me today on the Uniweb interview show. Terry, good morning to you, man. You're you're like way over there in Australia. <laughs> Right. Wait, wait, un, wait under here, yes. Wait so, under there, <laughs> under there. Uh, gr- gripping on to for dear life, so we don't fall off the bottom. That's right. <laughs> Holding on. What, yep. So, what time is it where you are right now? Uh, at the moment, it is quarter to six in the morning. So it's not Early. too bad. It's a good time. Uh, like as we were saying, it's a good time to sort of get down before the uh, the kids start waking up and the house sort of go. You know, Gets to the madness of the of the morning, so it'll it hopefully wild. have a nice quiet uh, section of time. Absolutely. Hopefully. Well, I, I thank you so much for coming on the show. For people who don't know, Terry is a writer. You're a cartoonist, and you're also an archaeologist, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not yes. being facetious. Uh, you are an archaeologist. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I worked as an archaeologist for sort of uh, about ten years before I. Uh, made the switch over to uh to writing um really trying to make that my 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 full-time gig so yeah it's a it's uh i'm at this stage only having done writing for sort of about a year and um uh archaeology for 10 i guess i'm probably more an archaeologist than a writer at the moment but but we'll we're gradually trying to swing that balance even in archaeology you're trying to discover a story right you're you're trying to uncover a story that was there yeah, exactly. Actually, it's uh, it was one of the, the sort of the reasons that I sort of stepped back and had a look at things. And I'd, I'd real when I got to nearly that ten year mark, and I realised I'd spent about a decade, you know, telling other people's stories. Uh, I was thinking, gee, I might, might like to start uh, telling some of my own. So, yeah, that's exactly, exactly what we do. Yeah, that's interesting. So you you went to school for all these years to become an archaeologist, and you're out there digging. And, and finding stuff, telling stories, and it comes to you that, hey, I'd like to get my own stuff out on paper at some point in front of other people. What was the what was the moment? Like, did you have these ideas of what you what stories you wanted to tell? Do you remember, like, what, yeah. what it was that happened? I, I do, I do remember. I guess the uh, the moment it all sort of crystallized down into something. Uh, something uh, that made me want to make that tangible change uh yeah. really it was the when the birth of my second kid um so i had my son uh we and he was about two years old when our daughter arrived and it was just one of those moments where sort of everything sort of just came together like the uh our son was just getting old enough he was starting to talk and starting to ask questions about things and I was sort of starting to, I was looking at the both of them and starting to realize, you know, I'm going to, well, one day we're going to have to field the questions about, the, you know, like, you know, what, uh, what, do, what do you do uh, for your job, dad? What what can I do when I grow up? And yeah. it was one of those things where I was, at the time, the some of the work that I was doing was really long hours. I, I wasn't at home pretty much at all. Uh, yeah. yeah, I was, you know, Tra- spending well, the time I wasn't spending on site, I was spending traveling to and from, and I just sort of sat down and thought to myself, well, is this really what I want to? Uh, when the, I start having to answer those questions, is this really what I want my answer to be? Uh, that I'm I go off uh, all day to go and yeah. uh, to hit, dig dig post holes <laughs> and um, and collect <laughs> rocks. Uh, and that's more important than you guys. So that's why I'm off doing that. So uh, being able to take a step back and, and look at that was good. And it was a, a, a moment where it really all sort of crystallized that, you know, there's these two little people, uh, three now, but two at the time, little people in front of me that have just got these amazing stories that are about to begin. And yeah. I've spent my entire career to that point looking at the stories of people that have been dead for thousands of years, uh, and that we'd ne- I'd never get to know as intimately as I could know the, know my own kids. So, yeah, it was a good thing that I was able to take that time to step back as well. Uh, so I have my wife to thank for a lot of that. Who's obviously she's uh, taken a bit more burden on as I've uh, uh, stepped out of that career and trying to start this new one. So. Wow! So it was a decision made of made out of love for for your kids. 
Yeah, yeah, and I'm not going to pretend it wasn't a lot for me as well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that standard, stock standard story of the writer who's always wanted to uh, to write but sort of ran off and uh, got a, a real job, uh, TM, before uh, trying to bring it back around to writing again. Well, so, is, that, is that what it was for you then? I mean, have you always been somebody who just loved telling stories, who loved to write? I mean, were you writing as a kid? Yeah, so I started writing pretty early on. Um, my first sort of, I guess, my first and greatest success at writing so far was when I was in grade three. So it was about, I think it was about eight or nine. Um, and there, there was a... In a so it's Australian been a while between successes. Competition. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so they had a, they were running a competition to, for a children's book to uh, to write, write the sequel, basically. And yeah. um, my, the little uh, story I uh, wrote and submitted there about the leprechaun's first uh, day at school um, and, and got into the uh, the top ten uh, nationwide, and I've been chasing that dragon of success ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you totally do. You're due for you're due for something. <laughs> I reckon. Hopefully, so we'll uh, we'll get there eventually. Uh, never mind. That's right. So you've been writing short stories um, since you started writing again. Is that right? Yeah. So I've been. I start. I did my masters in uh, writing and literature because obviously as an archaeologist the only thing i could think to do uh, was to go back to study when i uh, decided to change <laughs> career paths right. um uh, that i for that i had to uh, write a short story uh, about twelve thousand words and i sort of got the i i guess the bug for short fiction uh from there and uh this year you know, 2019 I'm, I'm putting out a new short story every month on uh, on my website and uh, trying to just get myself back into the habit of, you know, writing frequently, uh, yeah. exploring new ideas and new worlds and, and trying to make something out of them as uh, efficiently and as uh, interestingly as possible. So what's the website so people know? Oh, of course. Uh, so the website is uh, terrytalksfiction.com. And uh, on the like, on the first of every month, so we're recording this on the on the first of uh, of May, uh, Oz time. Uh, anyway, uh, so there's uh, there's a new story up just today as well uh, called the the Red Viking. It's a right. short little story about a, uh, a, a an AI archaeologist who uh, goes to Mars and uh, wants to recover the uh, Viking One uh, Mars lander, and the uh, wow. there's a bit of a story around the po just the politics of that so the archaeologist is an artificial intelligence it's not yes like... okay yeah not, not an archaeologist of ai's but an, an ai who at least believes themselves to be an archaeologist interesting so this is like is, is this set pretty far in the future uh relatively far yeah it's it's one of those uh no set date blink in the future uh type yeah. of stories there's so, a lot like that I feel like a lot of writers decide to do that because it's you know you're not in the prognostic prognostication game. It's not like this is what's yeah. going to happen. A set amount of time. I think uh, I think so many of us too grew up reading stories written in the '80s about the mysterious and very very future date of the year 2000 and the crazy things that people would be up to then. And uh, I think we've learned since that maybe don't pin it down exactly, right. <laughs> just in case. Give it a little, yeah, that, little bit of totally longevity. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is, is sci-fi? Have have the stories you've written so far on the website? Are they all, they're all sci-fi based? Uh, the mixing between sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, this uh, my two sort of great loves. Uh, certainly the genres I've read the most. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, it's, it's it's interesting taking the different approaches between the two because in a lot of ways they're fairly similar, but uh, obviously uh, magic and technology can be quite a bit different sometimes when you're trying to go for a, a realism or a pure fantasy. So it gives like, a nice to have a bit of a stretch. I like to believe that all the, the magic is in the future because it is a technology. I, I think like how, how we talk about fantasy and magic it all being stuff of the past i think it's it's wrong i think we're all i think we're looking in the wrong direction i think it's all stuff that's going to happen in the future not simply because of technology but also because of unlocking human potential that that's available to us 
that we're going to come to see. And it's going to be like, oh, we were looking in the wrong way this whole time. It was really these people. That's just my theory. See, this is where we need to have more archaeology in uh, in fantasy novels so we can start to, uh, to pin that down too. So <laughs> Try to figure it out, right? <laughs> There's someone digging through and find an old screwdriver and go, oh. So. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, exactly. Are you? Are all of like are a lot of your main characters like this character is an archaeologist AI? Are a lot of them based in the same field of work that you are? Not usually my characters, though. So far, at least, most of my fiction has had a pretty uh, heavy archaeological influence. Uh, yeah. If not through the way, sort of, I guess I build a fantasy world. I try to, I actually try to do that sort of uh, through uh, some archaeological principles, but mostly because that's what I understand the best. Um, but yeah, there's usually a bit of a, a, fl- a definite flavour, uh, I guess, to uh, when you spend ten years doing something. I suppose it's going to colour yeah. the way that you things for a while so well they always talk about write what you know right and if that's what you know well, I did. yeah so plus people yeah. love reading about other people's jobs too i feel like yeah there's archaeology, a sort of, archaeology there's feels like a cool field archaeology, yeah yeah there's yeah. sort of a certain definitely a certain romance to it thanks to you know indiana jones and uh, and the like um I, 10 years i never never got to punch a single nazi so it was very disappointing <laughs> But... Maybe one day. <laughs> I, think we're, I, think, I, I, think I we're see opportunities to getting right for that. Actually, but anyway, <laughs> you could always you could always punch one in the stories you're writing. That's yeah. true. I could. I, I've got pure freedom there to uh, to do whatever I like. So <laughs> punch whatever the heck you want, man. Are uh, so the the short stories. Um, is is this something you see yourself continuing to do for a long time? Like, do you have a plan? for your writing i mean i know you said you just started seriously getting back into it a year ago is publishing the short stories on your website is that like a long-term plan for you are you looking to publish a novel um or do anything like that in the future man i would love to publish a novel uh that is the the ultimate game uh the ultimate aim of the whole uh the whole thing at the moment, because I'm at home with the kids full time during the day and trying to cram all my like the part time archaeology work I'm still doing, um, and along with all the writing that I'm doing in the evenings, uh, it's short stories are very attractive at the moment because there's something you, I can do. I can I can start a short story and in a couple of weeks I can have that that finished, edited, ready to go, um, right, and up. Uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying, uh, as you mentioned, sort of at the top of the show, I had a, a bit of a history as a cartoonist as well. Yeah. And um, I, that's one of the things I really loved about when I was running my webcomic was just that, I guess that, not that instant feedback or gratification, but just being able to put something finished out there um, yeah. and keep, keep doing it and just keep uh, pushing myself creatively. So applying that now to my fiction writing is um, is is very attractive in that in that restricted time that I've got. Right. So the plan is to sort of do that for a couple of years, sort of just really hone hone my skills uh, with storytelling, and then mm-hmm. once I've got the kids packed off to uh, to school during the day, uh, then I can start to uh, use those hours to feel like, all right. Now I can sit down and spend you know four hours a day working on the novel uh so are there are there the stories that's the plan are there short stories that you see becoming longer series for you that you worked on so far yeah definitely there's one the one that went up last month for april um called applied linguistics was a little story about uh, a woman in a at a, a blood magic academy who basically oh. is kicking off a magical uh, industrial revolution uh, with having wow. uh, she's uh, changed up some uh, some very key things about the uh, society, and I think that one certainly has a lot of potential for um, okay. uh, as a wider uh, a wider work. Uh, some of the stuff that I'm doing in my sci-fi as well, I'm, I'd be keen to to explore. There's a story I've got slated for November, uh, I think, which is. Um, I'm really looking forward to sinking my teeth into uh, into that one, and uh, I think that's got a uh, some legs uh, for a longer story as well. Wow. So they're 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 out there. They're peppered through. Um, it, it's good to get that chance to 
explore the, the concepts a bit in the Schultz fiction. And then, you know, they're there and I can always look back at it and sort of see where I want it to connect with other plot ideas and run from there. Sure. So in terms of like inspirations for your writing, um, obviously you said you've read a ton of sci-fi and fantasy. Who are some of the authors that you've looked, you've looked up to your whole life? Well, uh, almost literally looking up to uh, Terry Pratchett there. I think he was a top shelf. Um, yeah. That was a uh, Pratchett was a huge inspiration. Uh, if I had half the ability, he has to weave humour through some really serious and really fascinating fantasy issues. Then that, <laughs> I'd be a very yeah. happy man. Um, uh, as far as the rest of family, like obviously uh, Tolkien was a huge influence growing up. Uh, as well, I think it, it probably is for most of us. Uh, yeah. The Hobbit is a is a pretty uh, pretty familiar early story for a for a, a fantasy tragic, um, and mo it's funny because most of my sci fi actually came through a lifelong obsession with uh, with Star Wars, and yeah. it's sort of a, it's really that's a sci fi fantasy anyway. So it's quite yeah. interesting to see how that's uh, how that's developed over time with the the whole reboot of all the all the literature uh, uh, several years ago when uh, Disney got the franchise and sort of the new and the old. I've got pretty much all of the old Bantam books uh, stuck up on the shelf back there behind me as well uh, that I just devoured growing up. And yeah. uh, I've read a couple of the new ones as well. But <laughs> What do you think about the new ones? I, I enjoyed the ones I read. Um, uh, obviously it's, it's interesting how different a direction they're taking a, a lot of it though and obviously now with the new movies it takes a really takes a different direction with uh, some of the characters as opposed to what the old literature did so it's interesting yeah, it's, it is interesting to, to see how they've they've completely grown the the lore and the um the context that star wars was to what it is now um it's it's a wild thing getting to be able to create your own world Right with with these fantasies, in terms of in terms of your writing style, are you are you big on world building and uh, are you like, like somebody who's like all about plot driven, character driven, world building? Like what what kind of what feeds your 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 inner writer? Like how do you go about pushing out the content and and building building a story? Man, I I love world building. Uh... Which is, it's really good that I've got the monthly deadlines <laughs> in this plan yeah. because like I could sit you could sit down and world build forever, um, right. but uh, I do like to sort of start I guess with a I as part of my master's degree I really got to drill down on my own process uh, I guess which was a really good part of doing that and I sort of worked out that the way I tend to write is I can't I, I like to come up with a theme for a story so that could be like a, it could be a particular set piece or a particular idea that i'm trying to explore and then okay. build up the world and the characters around that so i'd usually start with the world uh start with a theme a world that reflects the theme characters that work in that world uh and then um on sort of on top of all that sort of building up the layers like a archaeological site i guess the surface is what you see but, yeah um, which is the the plot and the narrative, but it's it's supported by all of that which comes uh comes underneath, which uh has to has to be there, I guess. Otherwise, the whole thing could just collapse when you're trying to uh to drive your characters across the top. See, it's always blown my mind how people can build worlds in such a way. It's I, I assume it's the same as building a character, giving them depth and and light and darkness and all this kind of stuff. Uh, but I feel like there's so much more involved there's so many more layers involved when you're building a world uh infrastructure and and how things work and the rules of the world um how the magic or whatever it is in the world actually work and then how it looks and feels um what are some things that you do to help cr help create these worlds because it to me like i'm sure for you it seems like kind of natural but to me creating a whole new world feels like something you know outside of my ability completely <laughs> I was, I was waiting for you to burst into song there with a whole new world. But, a uh, whole new world. <laughs> Here you go. Uh, um, yeah, look, obviously there's a lot of, I guess, cheats that you can uh, that you can take. Uh, when you're building a whole new world, a lot of it always will sort of reflect things in this world. 
and right. a lot of that can be assumed that the reader will take with them like the understanding like you know most books you don't have to reinvent gravity in order to uh tell right. your story uh, uh, unless you want to as part of the magic or as part of the if you're off in a generation ship somewhere uh that could be a, i guess an interesting part of uh, of a sci-fi plot right. but uh you sort of i guess get to take those assumptions and use them as sort of the the, the pillars that will hold uh hold the world up and hold up the reader's understanding uh, as they go through which as long as you've got the rest of it set around in a in a fairly logical connected way then you know it's it's it can it's pretty easy to keep that supported um certainly i think that's something that the field has de- the genre has developed uh over time uh, you know you do if you're reading um fantasy works or science fiction works from 100 years ago there's some very interesting moments <laughs> that's for sure um yeah. And, and but now nowadays, I think people tend most writers and most readers tend to understand. I guess the the implied contract of uh, of reading uh, genre fiction. You know, we're going as a reader, we're going to as, uh, assume to a point that the writer has done the work in setting up the uh, in setting up the world until and until something happens that reminds us or tells us that they haven't. Um, I think most readers are pretty pretty well um, and pretty well suited to. Uh, Go along with the go along with the ride and sort of not you know um, sort of Tolkien Tolkien said uh, back in the the 30s that you don't want your reader to suspend their disbelief you just want your reader to be able to understand and believe that what's happening in the world they're reading re- uh, reflects what they experience in the uh, in the world that they live in uh, so that it doesn't seem jarring and I think that's a good way of looking at it too. You've just got to if if you've done the the world building and the character building correctly, uh, yeah. then there shouldn't be anything that sort of shocks the reader out of that uh, out of that state. So, and that's so uh, I like mean, that, into a that's window. what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, or rather, or being, yeah, being in, or being invited into a room. You know, if you've uh, uh, you could be invited into a room that looks uh, wonderful. But if uh, if you sit down and the chair is made of uh, made of uh, paper instead of wood, then you're immediately going to notice uh, if it hasn't got that support and structure that it needs. So, okay. yeah, it's it's, yeah, so it's, it's uh, an interesting talk, but it's it that's part of the real fun of I think genre writing right. is trying to tread that line between too much and just enough to give the the world that you've made this real sheen of legitimacy. Do you ever feel like, like, where do I even, because I feel like there's been so much done and in fantasy and sci-fi. Do you feel like, where can I, where can I tell a story? Like what, what aspect can I go at it? that's different or new or fresh. Do you ever have that feeling like it's all been done before? (laughs) Yeah, uh, to an extent, I think this is where my time in web comics really helps me out as well. Because there's a uh, a couple of the the comic artists, that I, I guess, that I really enjoy uh, on the web have some favourite sayings. Well, part one of which uh, uh, was really sort of shared by the community, and which is that ideas are just no, their ideas are worth nothing, uh, but execution is worth everything. Absolutely. So. Uh, like there's so much of course everything's been done like you know yeah it did what matters is the way that you tell the story and, and that is going to be the point of uniqueness the point of differentiation um so uh, usually i'm i can remain excited uh, about projects uh, even if uh you know when you of course the day before you upload you then find something which is almost identical to yours and you go, yeah. damn it <laughs> so way, I I know, me um, but uh, but still, <laughs> you can sort of step back and look. Uh, well, at least mine is you know X X X, and that's Y Y Y. So you know, absolutely, there's something there for the reader that's different. Yeah, and, and I, it is a truly coming from your unique perspective. I think that's why it's so important as writers that we try and develop our voice first. Um, yeah, um, try to discover who we are and what like the sound like like what's going to resonate with me. 
because what resonates with me may be different than what resonates with you. And if you write what resonates with you, it's going to, you know, there's going to be people out there that, that find that. So with that, like, what are what are the 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 hallmarks for you in terms of writing that that you um like what what kind of message are you trying to get across in terms of your writing or like the feel almost because like for me i'm always looking for purpose i'm looking for um inspiration you know moving forward through life like trying to discover a question that i'm dealing with um so those are some of the things that i always try to discover through writing um I say that because I probably didn't ask the question very well. So <laughs> in terms of, so for you, like, are there things for you that you stick to? Um, I th- uh, there are certainly some themes that I seem to keep going back to um, in the sci-fi that I write. Ma- you know, hu- humanity's relationship with technology is a big uh, theme. Yeah. Uh, again, obviously, it's not anything that's groundbreaking or, or new but i think that um I, i'm enjoying exploring it uh, as, a, as a theme and as a concept um especially given that sort of archaeological uh background uh it yeah you know, i bring this one up first because it features heavily i guess in the story that i've most recently done where you have a you have a piece of technology um looking archaeologically looking at uh, another piece of technology yeah. um the in the fantasy that I write, I think the, the main theme I have there is uh, a set, trying to get across a, a sense of hope. Um, mm. A lot of the fantasy that I write really re- relies, uh, come back to uh, hope and if and perseverance, uh, I think. It, it, a lot of times the, the hero's journey is, is very much that. It's like someone there's a, someone pitted against the world, basically, and they, yeah. it's just their, their sort of their determination uh, seeing them through. Uh, I like to to sort of pit someone against uh, a world and try to make it so that that they don't necessarily win because they're you know the chosen one or they're they're winning because they personally have something that differentiates them from others. Uh, more that they win, uh, they get through the story because they keep going, um, and because yeah. that's the defining the defining factor, I think. Um, and I think it makes, I think that makes for more interesting uh, fantasy as well. Certainly, like chosen one narratives uh, abound, but, like, but even things like Harry Potter, you know, very clearly a chosen one narrative. At the end of the day, though, I think what makes that so relatable and so uh, so popular and such a good read is because that even though you know Harry Potter is the the chosen one, the boy who lived, he just keeps going uh, at it throughout all the novels. That his defining trait is that he just keeps uh, keeps going. He just keeps persevering, and I think that's a that's a theme we can all sort of uh, understand uh, and and get behind as well. Yeah, it's definitely a, a trait um, that we uh, attribute to, like a godlike being that just never gives up to keep moving forward. It's, it's like God. That'd be fantastic. Terminator, you know. It is. It's like a superpower, you know, to just keep moving forward, especially after so many trials and tribulations that are enhanced and magnified in, in storytelling. Um, I do want to ask for with archaeo- archaeologist stuff. Uh, has has there ever been like have you ever looked for like the missing link in terms of wanting to, because, have you ever thought about like you know we were put here by something else and the bones of the the past are like organic we're just like organic machines basically that was created by a technology and now we're creating a technology from our organic you know what I'm saying? So, like, it's a cycle yeah, it's, that's going on. It's, it, that's a, it's a really interesting perspective, too, because when you consider how different and uh, how different the machine intelligence that we're creating looks to us, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. it, like so if you uh, like, pro, uh, project that backwards, it's um, that it's a it gives a very interesting idea of uh, you know what uh, 
how things might uh, might be if you if you're trying to create something out of whole cloth. Basically, what do you what do you come up with? Um, yeah, okay, obviously stuck in Australia. Um, oh, I say stuck like I don't want to be here, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, the archaeology that we do here is yeah, you know, it's all all modern humans. Uh, we haven't had any um, pre modern uh, humans on the continent, as far as we're aware, and you know, it, it's a history that stretches back from you know two two hundred and fifty to three hundred years ago when um, when European settlers first uh, started to colonise the the continent, uh, all the way back to about sixty thousand years when Aboriginal people were arriving here for the first time. So really, most of my work in archaeology has been focused on on that time period. It's it's a really rich uh, history. Um, and a lot of it is really, I guess it relates too back to what interests me in the fiction is how much of that history is unknown and unspoken and forgotten. Uh, yeah. like, you know, the European colonists did a very good job of uh, wiping out the, the, the country's knowledge uh, of the past uh, when they arrived. And uh, archaeology sort of lets us claw a little bit of that back uh, in the same way, I guess, when you're writing a fiction story, you're telling the story of someone who, before that point, just didn't exist. Uh, you know, in, a, in a lot of the ways, like, you know, I've got some some artifacts next to me here from a, a site that I'm looking at at the moment. And in a lot of ways, like, these these artifacts are all that remain of whoever made them. Like, they're yeah. thousands of years old. They're... Who, the per person who made those, their bones are, have long turned into dust. Uh, but we can still look up, look at these, uh, what they've left behind and make, create a story uh, or, or, you know, reveal a, a story around about these people. And I think that, um, that marries in nicely to, uh, to fiction writing uh, as well. Yeah. It's interesting. So I'm not sure uh, if that actually answered the question. Or not. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> sure. No, it's cool. I, the question was weird anyway. Um, I also want to know, like, have you seen those? Have you seen those uh, images online of like where they discover like these giant skeletons of humans? You know what I'm talking oh, about? No, I haven't. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't. I have. I do know that there was a seriously. There was a very thing back in the day of uh, where people discovering elephant skulls, and um, because of the way that I guess you know the elephant trunk, the nose. Um, goes into the skull. Um, they, it looks very, they you say, oh, definitive proof of uh, of the um, Oedipan Cyclops. You know, like we see that we oh, like talked about in uh, in you know those old uh, the old stories of um, uh, the old Greek tales. Uh, definitely, yeah. definitely uh, proof. And um, so, and now, of course, we look back at them and go, oh, look, it's, it's an elephant. It's so, an elephant. <laughs> so, no, I haven't. Uh, I can't you haven't seen I have. any of the pictures of giant skeletons of human human no. giant skeletons. No, no, can't say. Okay. I was going to so, ask if like if it's a myth or if it's if you have any personal um, knowledge of it, but I mean, I guess I, I guess not. Look, I, I don't have any personal knowledge of it, but I'm I'd also be pretty pretty happy calling it a myth. <laughs> That'd be pretty <laughs> cool, right? Depending, I'm not too sure how giant you mean by giant. Um, certainly, some earlier there were some earlier iterations of uh, of of our genus that were a bit more robust. But I think we're talking like we're talking sort of a ten percent uh, difference more than anything else. I was thinking like, what if you know we're getting bigger as a people simply because of the amount of food available to us, the hormones in the food? What if like you know, three hundred years from now, everybody's at, you know, on average, like six five, two hundred and fifty pounds or whatever, and that's just like the average. But we've grown, and so like the whole idea of a species of human that existed before was this massive, like because they were huge. They were from they were from an advanced civilization. I'm totally spitballing here. <laughs> they were from an advanced civilization. And that's what the giants were like the pyramids. You know how they have the hieroglyphics of the, the super tall, looking creatures and that kind of thing. What if it's us from the future, bro? Coming back. Oh, in, what do you what do you think about what, that? What humanity could, humanity could become? 
Um, yeah. yeah, look, it's a, again an interesting concept. The uh, obviously giving you ideas like, for your sci-fi like stuff. Species. Yeah, like every other species, humanity is uh, constant, constantly changing. So, um, I I personally tend to want to stay away, not so much from time travel, uh, but from the idea that idea of you know sort of the ancient aliens, uh, ancient ancient societies uh, being colonized by people from the future, uh, such and so forth. I think it's I think it, it's more interesting um, reflecting on what humanity is being capable of. Uh, throughout history, uh, on off, the, off our own bat, basically, yeah. and what we can be capable of uh, in the future. Um, again, just sort of just really uh, doubling down on ourselves. I don't think I have any sci-fi which actually has aliens in it now that I've, uh, or any I plan to do now that I uh, I stop and think about it. Um, but but, uh, but hu- like so, humans from the future is uh, is something that I'll, I'm hoping to touch on at some point. So. Yeah, I it's, it's I asked, these are all my archaeological mental. questions. Yeah, it's interesting <laughs> to have that sort of that mental um, that mental brainstorm uh, on like what humanity might become, and so the physicality of it is, um, you know, it, uh, compare us to like yeah people from the medieval Europe, you know, like who yeah. you see those suits of armor and that for the tallest people, like these were giants uh, in the day, and they're like, oh, it's person smaller than me and i'm i'm not big <laughs> right so it's cool to uh it's cool to think of that in the future like what what will humanity look like and how much i think you know before we get much of a chance to physically develop um into anything new i think we're probably going like technology is probably going to to step in um whether that's technology uh through you know sort of what we traditional like traditional sci-fi tells us like you know we turn ourselves into things like uh, the ball you know with, with kind of. bits of uh computers hanging off us or whether that ends up being gene technology it's like uh like you know crispr um applied right. to the human gene and that it'll be interesting to interesting to see where it goes i guess um probably good that uh by the time anything truly wacky starts to happen we'll probably be well and truly gone and not have to deal with it <laughs> i'm hoping that I'll be able to be around when they discover how to re like how to re age you back to oh, a certain, okay. like become immortal. Yeah. That's the cat. I can't imagine aging, I can't imagine that you dig up stuff from like thousands of years ago without thinking like how far we've come and like where we're gonna go. You know, because you're looking yeah. you're looking at a spectrum of spectrum of time in your work and it's just like holy crap like all this has happened and in the last what 30 or 20 years it's been like this massive boom in terms of you know uh, what we've learned in technology and what's been developed and it's only going to get faster from then yeah, you know, the, the, next, the next 10 years now. is going to be insane yeah you're right it's 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 unprecedented this amount of technological uh adaptation that we're, that we're seeing um and even really really since the industrial revolution um yeah just the pace is it, the pace from then has steadily become just more and more aggressive uh aggressive with change um so it's interesting yeah, like like you say like you know we are a species that were quite content to puddle along with a single in- innovation for tens of thousands of years, and now all of a sudden we're getting so many innovations in the space of ten, uh, just ten years. It's uh, yeah, it's incredible. It's interesting yeah. what that does to a species um, psychologically uh, as well. I think, not that I, I don't know anything about it. Um, so uh, again, I'd be talking out of my uh, talking out of my rear if I was trying to ascribe anything to it. But I think it's certainly it's an interesting it's something interesting to reflect on just how that how that impacts the the psychology of humanity just to be going through this constant constant change yeah. um when you know, at heart we are probably a species that's uh that's you know happy and satisfied to uh to to puddle along with things uh for the majority of the time so yeah i think it's the fun of the fun of writing too though right it's uh getting to discover things that we typically wouldn't be able to figure out. Like we, we build stories about it and try and discover it in a different way. It's like working out a math problem with language. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the power of allegory is incredible, and it's uh, the, one of the really attractive things about writing science fiction and fantasy. You get yeah. to put those in in place for a real world problem, and you know, really explore it in a new way and take a new angle at it. Wow. Well, Terry, this has been a blast getting to talk to you, man. Um, I wanna I wanna finish off with. Well, first off, thank you so much for your time. Uh, tell me again wherever where we can find you uh, online. Yeah, great. Thanks, uh, and thanks again so much, Matt. To uh, we had uh, the viewers probably don't realize how many teething issues we had <laughs> getting this little thing together between uh, illness and uh, and time zones. So yeah, <laughs> uh, thank, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, you can find my fiction at TerryTalksFiction dot com. Uh, there's a new story out every month on the website there. And um, you can. Uh, there's also a uh, an email list there you can subscribe to for free. And uh, if when you do, you get I uh, send through all of the year's uh, stories that have been on the site in um, you know PDF and EPUB uh, form, so it's a bit easier to go through than scrolling down the site uh, the whole way yeah. Uh, as well. So yeah, recommend that. Okay, TerryTalkSciFi.com. And I did ask you before the show uh, to leave the viewers. Everybody, um, this if this is their first time getting to know you, an anecdote or a quote uh, that you'd like to leave us with. So I, I did. I had a bit of a rifle through my mental rolodex of anecdotes. Um, Realised that most of them were from my time in archaeology, and none of them were short. So <laughs> I might leave with a uh, with a quote uh, with a yes, yeah, bit of a quote instead, sort of informed by that. Um, like I've, uh, as we said, I've spent 10 years uh, in archaeology. I've spent a lot of time looking at the only re material remains of people that you'll never get to know, you'll never get to meet. So I just want to remind everybody that we are here on the planet for so short a time uh, and you will be forgotten by history no matter who you are. It's just a matter of time, so make that mm -hmm. time count. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if that's uplifting or depressing, but <laughs> it's all about perspective, right? right? On, on, uh, which way you look at it, yes. That's right. No, it's 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 fantastic. And I, I do I appreciate that because it's an honest perspective. Terry McManus, thank you so much again for coming on the Uniweb interview show. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Well, thank you, Matt. It, uh, it was really great. Thanks. Awesome, man. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You as well. And uh, yeah, good uh, welcome to, uh, from the future to everybody. Uh, oh, yeah. That <laughs> That's true. You are in the future. And those toilets flush backwards. <laughs> I, I think you meant to say the correct way, but I'll, I'll let right. you uh, yeah. I'll Sorry off that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good one. Perfect. Thanks, Matt.